Today, we're going to take a look at using OneNote in a little bit different way to create a visual to-do list. So if that sounds interesting, stay with me. Well, hi everyone, this is Crystal from A Crystal Clear Life, where we focus on planning, organizing, and living a more simplified life. And today, I would like to talk to you about uh, using OneNote as a visual to-do list. Now, uh, for those of you who may be new here, I'm a retired teacher, uh, and I am married to my best friend, Michael, who has also recently retired. And he has started using OneNote more for his personal things rather than just work. So today I thought it would be interesting to take a peek inside of his notebook, because you've seen mine forever, to get an idea about how he is using OneNote to help him keep track of all of the projects that he'd like to do around the house now that he's retired. All right, well, if that sounds interesting to you, please go ahead and give this video a thumbs up. Hit that like button down below. Hit the subscribe button if you have not done so already so that you don't miss any future videos. Turn your notification bells all the way on. And with all of that out of the way, let's jump right into this video. Well, you can see here in OneNote, I have my husband's notebook open up here. Uh, remember, my husband and I and my daughter share all of our notebooks. Here's a whole long list of all of the notebooks uh, that I currently have open. But we're going to be looking at Michael's notebook today. And you see that he has a number of tabs across the top. Now, one thing that he does um, that's a little bit different than I do is he does lots of not only tabs, but then he does sub tabs. So he nests lots of things together. I tend not to do that because I like to be able to see everything, but you know what? You have to do whatever works for you. So today we're going to take a look back at his 2024 projects. And these are things that he just started doing when he started using up his leave last year before he actually retired. Okay. All right. So here you see, he's got just a blank page that says 2024 project list. And that really is like a title page, you know, kind of thing to break up the projects for 2024 from anything else that he might have in his notebook. Okay. Then if we look at the 2024 list here, you'll see that he also has them uh, broken down by fall and uh, summer. So let's first take a look at fall. All right. So here is the fall project list for 2024. So this would be last fall and winter. Okay. And you can see what he's done here very easily, um, to set up a to-do list for himself. Uh, he's, he has created a table. Remember he's an IT guy and Excel spreadsheets were his life for years and years and years. So it has to be in a table, which I think is great. But one of the things that he wanted to do, uh, once he was, you know, officially retired was to go through and organize his dress shirts. You can see here that he has lots of dress shirts because he had to wear them every day, suit coats, all of that kind of thing. So he wanted to go through and organize those, get rid of any that are too big or starting to show wear. Um, and just keep a few for special occasions and that kind of thing. Okay. So what did he do? He went in his closet and he took a photograph of the shirts that he wanted to organize and he dropped it into one note in his to-do list. Okay. Then you see this little section over here, the next row in the, in the, um, table, uh, has just some brief information about what he wants to do. Organize his dress sh shirts, separate the shirts. Um, and three, five is the date that he was working on doing that. Okay. That's actually when he finished doing that. Okay. And he has another little box over here that says mostly done in January of uh, January 17th of 2024. Okay. So really what he has is he has a visual picture of what he wants to do. He has some notes or information about what needs to be done. And then the green column over on the end is when it's completed. Okay. So if we go on down and take a look, 
Uh, here's another picture. This is down by the uh, basement door and a pre-dump run. So we have a bunch of large boxes that things came in and old computer equipment that we want to get out of the house. We've taken all the hard drives out. We've done all that stuff. And now these cardboard boxes and things just need to go to the dump. So they are staged here by the back of the basement door because it was too wet at the time to bring the vehicle around to load them into the car to take them to the dump. Okay. All right, you see here, done, all right? And then my, my favorite little Eagle Peak greenhouse that I had, my little 10 by 10 greenhouse, actually succumbed to all of the heavy snow that we had this past winter, and it collapsed on itself. I probably should have taken it down. I didn't realize we were gonna get that much snow. My fault. Although I will say after the few years that we had had it, the plastic was starting to wear out and I was trying to think of other ways that I could, you know, put new plastic on it. So it's okay that it ended its life, um, but it became a chore around the house. So the greenhouse was out front. We needed to take the greenhouse down. We did that in January. Okay. So again, a visual to-do list I think is great. Let's look at summertime. And you can see here um, the to-do boxes that he is using are simply the to-do that comes standard with OneNote. He is not using customizable tags like I do, um, and that's fine. Remember, everybody uses OneNote differently. I thought it would just be interesting to show you a different take on how somebody else uses it, okay? All right, so here's the summer list for 2024, all right? <laughs> I think these little emojis are cute in the titles. And he's got yellow up there for summertime. Same kind of setup, three columns, photo of what he wants to do. So here on the back deck, uh, we have two steps that come up from the side of the house. And you can see here this board is bowing out and, you know, the hose is a mess and all that kind of stuff. Um, and what was happening is, is these boards were actually sagging. You can see there's a little slit in there where they were actually sagging. So uh, that, that shows that either something is rotten under there or needs more bracing or something. Okay. So what he wanted to do is figure out how to take care of this problem. So he left himself some space for some notes, maybe get some two by sixes, cost $10, do it during the summer, checked it off that it was done in seven on seven two. So in July. Okay. And then he has another picture here. Let me zoom in a little bit so you can see. So this picture here shows like a work in progress. His tools are out. You can see the new boards that he's put in and sistered those up against the old boards um, so that that will take care of that. You see that gap is now missing out of the board and he'll just put the fascia board back up and everything will be fine, okay? And it, it's very sturdy now. It works really great. Moving on down, um, there were some other... Um, Places that he wanted to add mulch, we bought some of these Korean spice bushes. There's three of them, and we wanted them planted over here on the east garden side, and it's very shady over there, so we thought they would work. So he took a photograph of the area with the plants sitting there, where they were to be planted, um, and then what he was going to do with all this mulch, spread it around and, you know, make it look a little bit neater, okay? Um, the mulch costs zero dollars because we already have it in the front yard for this project. Um, and so he was able to complete that again in January. And then he has his finished project, finished picture right underneath of that. Okay, so now you can see all three plants are planted. The mulch has been dispersed and everything looks much better. This was a project that I didn't think really needed to be do done, but he wanted to do it again. How he spends his time is his own thing. So here along the East Garden, you see we just have rhododendrons planted. And what he wanted to actually do is take this little retaining wall out that's here and move it out to give the rhododendrons, which are growing here, more room, you know, to fill in the garden. And so that became um, the process. But what I wanted to show you here is, again, he's taking this photograph. He's using the draw tool. So you go up here to the draw tool. You can click on a pen and, you know, you can come down here and say, you know, you can write on your picture. You can add, you know, whatever you would like to it like that. And that gives you an idea in your to-do list of the things that need to be done. Okay. 
All right, I better get those off of his, <laughs> off his picture. All right, so that project right there uh, was going to be a lot of manual labor, but not much cost. So if you can see here in his uh, little section where he's tracking things, he was going to need some 4 by 4s to build up that retaining wall. They were $12 each, $120 for the retaining wall. Uh, then maybe get some paver sand, 20 bucks. Some pink bar, which is like a rebar type thing to put down in the 4x4s, um, $15. And a subtotal of $155 to get this project done. Okay, So then what it required was him doing all the labor himself, All right, which was great. He worked on this side which is where the azaleas were, and then he also reinforced this retaining wall here because this is where the yard <laughs> turns into the woods on our property. Um, and so we just wanted a little bit more um, definition there, okay? All right, so he's got all that stuff worked out, and then here is the finished project from the other end. So he's made the garden bed much wider, uh, and the pathway through here is all nicely mulched, and the retaining wall is completed now especially down here at this end, and it looks great, all right? So visual to-do list. Here's another one. Clean these steps off, right? Because of all the, you know, the mulch and stuff that gets in there. Um, and just make sure that those steps are secure. While he was doing four by four work, was there anything in here that needed to be stabilized, okay? And you can see from here, from this picture, that he was able to do that. So there's the new four by four right there at the bottom. Okay. All right. I think really this is a great way um, to create a visual to-do list. You know, we almost always have our phones with us and we're out and about walking around the yard or maybe you're, you know, inside the house and you're thinking, oh, I need to fix this. You know, I need to hang the curtains. I need to, you know, fix this, you know, picture that's crooked. I need to, you know, all these things that you think about when you walk through, but you don't really maybe have a paper and pencil to write it down or maybe the picture is a better clue to what needs to be done for you. And then you can mark it up and you know, that kind of thing as you would like to. Okay. All right. Dead shrub needed to come out. Done. Okay. Uh, trim this tree that's hanging a little bit too low. Done. And, uh, this one was interesting because we have these two, I bought these two little Japanese holly trees at Aldi years and years and years ago. You know, they're little sticks in a little box, right? And I thought, well, I can nurture these along and they'll be fine. Well, they are beautiful now. They're probably six, seven foot tall uh, and just absolutely gorgeous, but they've been growing in these pots. Okay, so let me zoom in here and see if you can see this pot. So they've been growing in these little plastic pots right here. And the roots were actually starting to, you know, bust out of the pot. The tree really needed some more room. I did not want it to become a bonsai tree. And so I thought while he was working with all those landscape stones on the retaining wall on the side, maybe he could build, you know, like a tree well or something like that for this little tree to live in. I didn't want to change really the height of where it was buried and all of that kind of thing. I didn't want to disturb the taproot that on this one tree had busted through the bottom of the pot and was down into the ground. So I didn't want to disturb where the tree was. I simply wanted, you know, a well to put it in. So he kind of laid out, you know, what he might need for that and thought about it and thought about, okay, I'm going to need, you know, $70 worth of brick and a base layer. Um, and if you've ever priced pots before, you know that most big planter pots are more than $100. So this seemed like a good solution. Uh, and then here is the finished product, the finished project. You see he made a larger well for that tree to live in. This is all filled with soil now. The tree was not disturbed at its existing level and everybody was happy. And apparently my husband celebrated by having a beer. So there you go. <laughs> Anyway, I just wanted to come on today and share with you a really, really smart way to create a visual to-do list that you can make notes on, that you can mark up if you need to, all of those kinds of things simply by doing it in OneNote.
Now, really quickly, for those of you who may not know, um, OneNote not only has all of these tabs at the top uh, that you can use, but there are also um, you know, the pages down the side, so you can create new pages, just like you would have a three-ring notebook you know, that you put pa papers in behind a divider. Um, and all he did here was created a, um, a table. So if I go up here to the insert menu, I can do insert table, and he wanted it three columns by, you know, however many, and started with a very basic table like this, okay? Now, you may ask me, well, Crystal, why is his table so narrow? And, you know, so that his words here don't really, you know, stretch out very much. He's designed this table so that when he's out and about and he's looking at his phone, he can see all of the information. He can see the complete to-do list. All of the pictures come up on his phone, the information that he needs. So if he's going to the hardware store, what, he's, what he needs to pick up is there. And then he has a done column, you know, so that he can check it off uh, to say that it's done. So in this little column table that I just created here, you can go over like that. Okay, to make it about the width that you want. Then when you come into this first cell, uh, let me go to the second one because the first one he would have named Summer, like so. And when you come to this first cell, you can say insert uh, a picture. Okay, and it will either say, do you want to insert it from your file or from your camera or somewhere online? So let's say you're, you know, you're on your phone and you want to insert it from your camera, you can just take a picture right there and it will put it in. I'm on my laptop at the moment, so I need to insert it from a file. So let me just find, okay, here's one of my favorite pictures. So we'll just insert that picture and you see that it puts it right inside that table. I can still modify that. I can make it smaller or larger, depending on what I need. And again, I can annotate on it. I can, um, you know, come over here with my pen and I can draw right on the picture if I want to, like so. I can color it in, you know, whatever I need to do. Um, and then over here is where he would take notes. So I, I would put, you know, notes up there and then completed there, okay? Um, so that you could say, you know, I got to make muffins and, um, you know, just whatever, whatever it happens to be, like you see what he's doing over here. And then you can do a to-do box. So you can go up to uh, your home menu is where all of the basic to-dos are. Here are all the tags, a bunch of tags that I've created. But the simple to-do tag is, do I have a simple to-do tag anymore? Oh, yes, I do. <laughs> Simple to-do tag is there, and then you can put when it's completed. Okay, you can mark off when it's done. So the tag comes in like that, and then when you're done, you just put a check mark there. Okay? I think that is great. All right, well, I just wanted to really show you this quick and creative way to create a visual to-do list for yourself for all those projects around the house that you might have or all those projects at work that you might have uh, that you need to keep track of. All right, I hope you learned something new today. Don't forget to give me that thumbs up. I appreciate it. And if you've tried anything like this, please go ahead and leave me a comment below letting me know. Maybe leave me a, a heart emoji or a house emoji if you've done something like this. Um, I think that would be pretty cool. And here's hoping that you can live a more simplified and organized life through better planning. I use OneNote. Until next time, okay, bye.